Good evening everybody, it's Thursday 23rd of December 2021 and we are again stood outside Gloucester Cathedral. It was exactly a year ago that Randy and I brought you 2020's Christmas greetings and showed some of the work that we've been doing on Josephine. That little video actually has been seen over 15,000 times and we have a small group of subscribers now across social media. Amazingly really, given the few videos that we've put out, but we're very heartened by that. We're very pleased to welcome all those people that, that are following our work on Josephine. So we thought it was about time that we did a little review. So we've come out this evening just to really take some pictures of the Christmas lights in Gloucester to wish everybody a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year and also after this little greeting we've put together a summary of the work that we've done over the course of the last 12 months so we hope you enjoy that so Merry Christmas everybody and a Happy New Year. Send in lots of love to family and friends and I hope you have a great time over Christmas and wish you all the best for the new year. We began Josephine's deck and topsides restoration at T. Nielsen's shipyard in September 2020. This is me and Randy in the final scene of last year's video documenting those first four months of work. If we'd known how much work was coming in 2021, we might well have spent a little bit more time in the sun that day. We have been busy. Um, I suppose I don't really need to say very much about the uh, situation at the moment with the pandemic. Everyone, once you mention the dates, I think people will look back on this year, won't they? 2020 and 2021, and everyone will understand, all around the world, one will understand. It's a bit like one of those car crashes where the car keeps rolling over. You, Every time it gets to its feet again, on all four wheels, you just hope it's not gonna roll again, but it does. To be honest, we barely noticed the pandemic. Nielsen's more or less shut down at the beginning of 21, with just a skeleton crew to keep things ticking over. But Randy and I were able to work on in our own little bubble. January and February were largely spent getting the deck beams and hull frames ready for laying the new deck. A diary entry at that time reads, I fill, plug, grave, scarf, fill, cap, sand, plane, cut, glue, clamp, bolt, screw, dump and fair, while Randy paints, paints and paints. We also cut, fixed and fared a couple of new deck beams, and by the end of February we were ready to start laying the new deck. I have already published a video detailing the deck laying, and you can see that on our YouTube channel. Here are the highlights of our work over the last nine months, from April onwards. While Jason finished off the stern repairs, I began making and fitting joggle carlings in preparation for laying the aft deck. Where the end of deck planks meet the waterboards, they are often joggled into the waterboard to avoid the deck plank ending in a vulnerable thin wedge shape. More often than not, these plank ends don't naturally end on a supporting deck beam. So to provide that support, one adds joggle carlings. In between my work on the joggle carlings, I kept Randy supplied with wooden plugs so that she could start plugging up the deck that had been laid. Thank you. 
And of course, the constant background work of varnishing, vacuuming and painting continued apace. Although the main part of the deck was laid by this time, all the fiddly bits, where the deck meets the waterboard, now had to be tackled. Here is an example of laying a non-joggled plank. And of course, the painting. By June, the deck laying was nearly finished. Here is one of the final planks to be laid, a joggled plank, where I had to cut into that nice two inch oak waterboard. Nervous moments. We owe everything to our shipwright project manager, Dominic, firstly for teaching me how to do this, and then, incredibly, trusting me to do it. Okay. The damage and decay in Josephine's stern section required a complete rebuild. Whilst most of this was due to poor long-term general maintenance, it wasn't helped by the design of her steering system. A lot of deck-mounted sheaves, gearing and cabling had attracted rot in and around itself and prevented access to maintain the wood under it. We needed to fix this, and in the end opted to scrap the whole lot and replace it with a hydraulic system that would operate largely under rather than on top of the deck. We couldn't afford to fit a new system, so began a search for second-hand equipment, a search that led us far afield to Scotland, Denmark and Germany. Then miraculously, a complete system became available right on our doorstep, eight miles away at a place called Saul, on the very canal leading to Gloucester itself. As part of the deal, we had to remove it ourselves. We initially tried to sell to Saul, but were held back by headwinds. So it was out with the bikes and the trailer.
hug. There she is. Remarkably, there was very little modifications needed to make the system fit Yosefi. We had to grind off the existing flanges and gussets, reposition these and re-weld them, some machining of the main bearing to fit our rudder stock, and really that was about it. Of course, we also had to align everything and make a new mounting system, which Dominic and Jason designed and built. Jason is currently working on the uh, steering box. He's making a cowling to go round our combing. combing sorry, C combing to go round our. Uh, I suppose you call it a ram box. Where the hydraulic rams. And the idea is that the the box that houses the rams sits on top of the combing. So Jason's made this beautiful piece of work. You see those lovely joints? These are combing joints and they're specifically designed to prevent water collecting. So you see the angle at which the join is cut, but it has to be on both sides. So it's a complex joint. Um, so the water can't collect there and if any water does get in, it will run out. So that's what Jason's just about to start fitting. Uh, there's much to do yet. Once the combing is made, there has to be uh, some metal flanges welded along the side of the box uh, to marry it with the top of the combing so that the box effectively sits on top of that combing. And then we have this uh, flange on the outside. It's been made wide enough so that another box can be put on top of this so that we can build it a table into this. So there'll be a seating area around the, around the outside and a table in the centre. Uh, here's the rest of it. This is the pedestal that holds the wheel and uh, in between other jobs I get to do um, stuff like fitting the hydraulic hoses. I've had to drill through here, they go down through there, into the engine room and then I'm finding a nice path for them so that I can bolt them up in the engine room all the way around to the stern box around there. Um... By August the oak covering boards and the deck planks were all laid. It was time to tackle the third and final component of the deck, the covering boards. These literally cover the gap between the stanchions and are fitted from the outside. The covering boards are heavily fastened, with spikes into the top of the shear strake and the hull frames. Dumps are cut to length and driven through the covering boards and into the water boards. And finally, the planks are spiked into the stanchions. So that template, as you can see, fits in there lovely. we we'll just check it. Fits in there nicely. Let's just have a look. Yeah, that's fine. Maybe a little bit short there. Uh, that's because it's not pushed in here, look. Okay, so that's nice and tight there. Right, let's get started. So that's what we start with. So if I move the template away now, because we're more or less finished with that, so if I just put that to one side for, um, for a minute, we now have the bits that we need to cut. This is the end, that goes round the stanchion at this end, at the forward end, and then the three stanchions. Coming fewer and far between, partly a few days. The virus can live on certain hard surfaces for several hours, but we.
Okay, that's finished now. The plank has been countersunk and pilot holes have been drilled in all the right places. So if we treat this as one section, there'll be two dumps from the outside of the plank, th through the whole of the covering board and half to three quarters of the way through the water board. And they go at an angle. And now I can turn to the oakum. And what I'm going to do is just lay a thin coat of red lead and linseed oil. So the next job is to lay the oakum. So there we have red lead and oakum nicely bedded in along the whole length of the plank. Take me to that. Just put a little bit of that's going to be going in there. The deck now finished, it was time to fare it. A video of this, which I published earlier in the year, can be seen on our YouTube channel. Heavily spiked into deck beams and restrained by oak waterboards, the natural forces of caulking to spread the deck planks is normally prevented. However, deck structures like hatches, coach houses and wheelhouses are natural weak spots and unless properly restrained, easily become distorted, creating leaks and potential wood rot. Josephine's coach house needed extra shoring to prevent this, so we added dumps to secure her lateral combings to the deck beams and added eight new custom-made tie rods to restrain her longitudinal sides. I put that across between my fixings just to make sure that I worked in a nice straight line. I should see the other hole lined up, and I do. 
Don't want to over tighten it. We're not trying to move anything, remember, here. We're just trying to stop things moving. There we go. That's the first one. There we go. Up, there you go. All done. Right. The next big job was to cork the seams, a major step forward for us. But first I had to learn how, and Dominic gave me some lessons. That's a single crease, yeah. narrow. That's a single crease, wide. It's a single crease, even narrower. Look. Okay. Pull it gently, but not too much, otherwise it'll break. The idea, if you've got a bucket of water, to smell it in water to smell it up. Corking that in a little bit. So, are you right-handed? Yes, you probably do the same as me, yeah. in about an inch. Right. Offering my iron in, yeah. so that I'm not trying to... I bring it across, and I get my iron entered. Yes, so that you don't push it over. That's the last one to get the second one in. What you can do with your money if you don't Well, that's right. Great. Oh, yeah. so you said about leaving two tails, so you yeah. know that this is a second. That's had a second. That's had a second. As Monty might describe it, this is our blue period. Really blue. Come on, on the go. We're about to have a, a lesson on how to do this. So we'll be calling Dominic over in a minute. So I really have to rush this. We're running out of time, in fact, this evening because uh, Nielsen's close at quarter, quarter past four, they all knock off. So we've got just enough time for a quick lesson on this.
good afternoon. It's uh, Wednesday, 1st of December, and it's uh, 5 to 3. So I've got another hour's work or so before uh, shutdown time. Uh, quite interesting times now on the boat with the deck finished, all fitted, uh, caulked with oakum and paid with pitch. So that job's done. That took much longer than I thought it was going to, but then it's quite an involved job when you're working on your own and even more so when you're a rank amateur. Uh, but it did take longer than I thought and I, it started to get a bit tedious towards the end, so I'm glad it's finished. Uh, so this week's been about reorganising ourselves and deciding on what's next. And of course we guided by uh, the, uh, our, our master shipwright, Dominic, who advises on what's best and uh, he suggested that we cork the hull on the outside so that's what we're doing on top of that depending on the weather if we can work outside that's what we'll do if not i'll come inside and do for instance the capping rail or something else lots and lots of little sort of bells and whistles putting back on the boat now it's really quite exciting because you're really starting to gather pace putting stuff back on it anyway i just thought i'd show you the uh, what fairing involves and what it looks like if you just stand by a minute i've got to get down there without falling in there we go. So there's the hull. You've got uh, various bits and pieces. You can see the shear plank is all new, obviously, and there's another plank there that is new. Um, that bolt sticking out there is just for reference where the, one of the chain plate holes goes. But the problem is when you put the new planks on, the two inch planks, because originally the boat had two inch oak. Uh, hull planks. Um, the new ones of course are wider than the old ones because the old ones over the years get fared back every time it's restored and um, they end up not so thick. So you can see there's a big step here look between the new plank and the old plank and also there. In places, some places worse than others, you can see that butt end there you see. So the idea is to use an electric plane and just fare all this all nice and uh, smooth and that's what I've got to do and that's what I have been doing I'm starting here at the bow of the boat I hope you enjoyed this review of our 2021. For me, looking back was fun and terrifying in equal measure. So what of 2022? In the new year, we will be going into dry dock to begin the last leg of this rescue mission. We rescue Josephine so that she can rescue us. But for now, we wish you all a happy new year and thanks for watching.